Hello, I'm Philippa. And I'm Dean. And we are going to tell you about our study describing the relationship between epileptic seizures and epileptic spike wave discharges, which we shall simply refer to as spikes. Before getting into the details of our findings, we would like to convey how we think about seizures and spikes using an analogy comparing epileptic events to bushfires. We can think of spikes as small contained spot fires, which often go unnoticed, and we can think of seizures as full-blown uncontrolled bushfires. The relationship between spot fires and large-scale bushfires is unclear, just as the relationship between spikes and seizures continues to evade researchers. For example, spot fires can be a positive thing that prevents large bushfires by fuel reduction, but they can also be the trigger of much larger fires if they spread uncontrollably. Similarly to spot fires with bushfires, spikes have been hypothesised as being both protective and provocative in regard to seizures. The analogy can be extended even further to treatment strategies. The most successful efforts to reduce the devastating effects of fires is by reducing susceptibility, rather than to fight raging infernos after they have started. What is missing for epilepsy is a good biomarker of susceptibility, so we can be proactive in reducing seizure likelihood. The aim of our research is to establish a relationship between spikes and seizures. If they are linked, spikes could be used as a biomarker to better understand and manage epilepsy. Relationships were explored by comparing the occurrences of events relative to the time of day and over longer cycles, as well as the effect of seizure events on spike rate. To explore this relationship, we used intracranial EEG data that was collected as a part of a clinical trial for a seizure prediction device. It was collected from 15 patients with uncontrolled epilepsy over a time period from six months to three years. This data set is the longest continuous human recording in existence and provides the first and only opportunity to study long-term relationships between spikes and seizures. The times of all seizures were expertly and independently marked and the times of epileptic spikes were automatically detected. Okay, so we found that spikes and seizures were more likely to occur at particular times of day, as we see here on the 24-hour clock, with the outer ring showing spikes and the inner ring showing seizure occurrences. The intensity of the colours reflects the likelihood of seizures and spikes at a particular time of the day. For this patient, both spikes and seizures were more likely to occur in the late afternoon or evening. Now here is the same plot for each patient. Importantly, the times of high spike and seizure likelihood varied between patients, as we see here comparing these two subjects, but usually times of high spike and seizure likelihood were aligned for an individual. Alignment indicates a common factor regulating spikes and seizures. Here is a scatter plot with each dot showing the occurrence of each seizure with the x-axis showing time of day and the y-axis showing the progression through the study. Interestingly, we observed times where seizures were extremely unlikely. Some patients had time periods up to five hours at the same time every day that we are highlighting in the rectangles where seizures rarely occurred. The relationship between spike rate and seizures was highly patient specific. This figure shows a comparison in spike rate between intrictal and pre-seizure times. The x-axis indicates different subjects and the y-axis is a normalised spike rate. Three patients showed a significant pre-seizure increase in spike rate. Six patients showed a significant decrease. And no significant change was found in the remaining six patients. Our findings show that spikes are neither exclusively protective or provocative. We also show that spikes and seizures are linked and are a part of a continuum of epileptic events. There is a complex relationship between spikes and seizures which is highly subject specific. Now a major problem in treating epilepsy is the intermittent nature of seizures, making it difficult to refine therapies. The circadian patterns and interrelationships between spikes and seizures that we've identified provide new treatment strategies for epilepsy. Understanding times of high and low seizure and spike likelihood could improve patient management, providing a means to titrate therapies, to forecast seizures, and to monitor new treatments. Our study highlights a need for devices that can perform chronic and continuous monitoring of neural signals in order to better manage epilepsy.